morning, Dr. Sanjeev. Good morning. We are riding to Sakin Chan, 100 kilometers. According to weather forecast, it's going to be super sunny and hot. Dr. Sanjeev, I have two pairs of sunglasses. One pair is photochromic lenses. The other one is dark lenses. What should I be wearing today? I always do wear photochromatic. Because what I see is people who use 100% tend to not use the sunglasses when they start the ride. You have to always remember that the sunglasses is for protection, not only from the sun, but any pebbles that get shot up from the bike in front of you. And just one little pebble can damage your eyes permanently, so photochromatic is the way to go. Would the darkest of photochromatic lenses be as dark as the 100% one? Does it provide equal protection to the eyes? Never will be. Never. Never. It's a give and take. Uh, you can use for photochromatic for dark days as well as bright days, but it's never going to do either job perfectly well. I actually have got more questions, just that we're going to be starting our ride later. Can I see you in the clinic? Sure, no problem. <laughs> Alright. Welcome to the first episode of Terra Us. In this series, I'll be interviewing different cyclists and asking questions that you want to know. For my first guest is Dr. Sanjeev. Hi, hi Terra. I actually took an advice the other day and I wore that pair of uh, photochromatic lenses. I've got to say, towards the end, I kind of suffer a little bit. Because we were doing a fairly long ride and it was so sunny that day. Okay, there are a few things that I want to tell you about photochromatic lenses. Its main feature is it uh, filters out UV light. How it actually uh, darkens is because of cold temperature more so than warm temperature. So as we wear it in the morning, because it's cold, it darkens more. But unfortunately in our weather, by the time you reach 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock where we are yeah. dying, yeah. yeah, it gets brighter. So they are actually more useful in a colder climate than it is in tropical weather like, like ours. What I prefer is pho photochromatic lenses with already 20% darkening. Now Oakley sells it and you can see they'll tell you it's already pre-existing 20% darker mm. on top of that photochromatic. So if you get plain photochromatic you may not get the ideal darkness because of our weather. What do polarized lenses do? Oh, polarized lenses is like um, you know the curtains, the horizontal curtain bars that mm -hmm. you have at offices? Yeah. They are basically that way. So when you pull it up, a certain amount of light gets in and a mm -hmm. certain amount doesn't. Mm -hmm. What polarized lenses does is vertical light it allows through the lens, mm -hmm. horizontal light it cuts off. Mm -hmm. It's more useful on bright days if the road is basically reflecting light and you mm. have glare. It cuts off that glare because sunlight hits the ground mm. and then it comes towards you in a horizontal fashion. So when you use polarized lenses, it cuts that off. It'll be extremely useful if you're skiing and you're in like snow, obviously skiing mm. in snow. Mm. When cycling? I find it comfortable and I also like the fact that colors look more prominent mm -hmm. in polarized lenses. But yeah. Uh, I don't really go looking for it. it. It relaxes the eye, but between polarized and photochromatic, photochromatic cuts out UV light. UV light apparently causes cataract yeah. later on in life. Yeah. What about the different colors of the tint? Do they matter? Uh, not so much. You're going to do some night rides, you know, like you when you were in Singapore, mm -hmm. you, if you start at 4 o'clock in the morning, mm. I prefer using a yellow tinted lens. You see structures clearly and then after that as you go into 7 o'clock, because you stop riding by 7 o'clock, so it gives you a certain degree. Um, yellow lenses are about 20%, I think it cuts off 20% of light. So, so what's the principle behind different colours of the tint? Whenever you have a certain tint, it blocks out that wavelength alone. Mm. So that's what it does. So I think it's also a lot of preference. It's not going to add or subtract from your experience. So in terms of safety, protection of UV, it's actually all the same? Yeah, it is. The main reason I tell everyone to use sunglasses while cycling is forget about the UV light, forget about the glare. It's the fact that when you're riding in a peloton, you're very close. I mean, if you're, you've been riding in a peloton for a long time, sometimes you're as close as well, six inches to a foot. Those pebbles and debris, mm. they can just shoot up. And if you're unlucky, you get hit right in the eye and that's a terrible injury. I've seen 
Over the years, about three patients, cyclists with one pebble just hitting the eye, and then they develop high fever. And then that becomes a long-term thing where you have secondary glaucoma, so it's really bad. So it's not about looking cool, always wear your sunglasses. But there is a huge price range of sunglasses on the market. What factor we should be looking at? I used to say, you know, you get what you pay for. <laughs> but, uh, that I'm, applies I'm, to everything, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of sunglasses uh, coming out from China, which is high quality. But the thing you need to look for is um, your aberration of the glasses. Mm. If it's not curved very well, what you see outside is the road may be a bit like Benko or the lines may be mm, a bit that's mm. that's the most important thing all these cycling sunglasses are meant to sort of cover your entire field of yes. vision yes. that is a criteria that I look for so I've tried you know I've tried a lot of sunglasses <laughs> the ones that I find the best is POC yeah R&D in uh, sunglasses is more than any other company I know I'm not being sponsored by them <laughs> Yeah, they're comfortable, mm -hmm. they, they do the job. We have been talking a lot about sunglasses because we wear sunglasses because we want to protect our eyes from pebbles and also from sunlight. Yeah. What damage does UV light to, to our eyes? Well, cataract formation is very multifactorial. One of the things that produce cataracts as we are getting older is UV light causes discoloration of your lens. Mm -hmm. That produces cataracts. But I can't say Let's say somebody has been wearing UV protected sunglasses from the age of 20 for the rest of his life every time he goes out. I can't 100% say he's never going to get cataract because, yeah. like I said, it's multifactorial. When sweat that gets into our eyes, does it cause any harm? If you are dehydrated, if you are cycling for long distance and you don't hydrate yourself, mm -hmm. the sweat that comes out is concentrated. Okay. So it's got sodium in it, so your eyes will start to smart. Even if you're not cycling and you don't drink water throughout the day, the sweat that gets in the eye, you feel like it's burning. Yes. A lot yes. of patients tell yeah. me this. Oh, doctor, my eyes are really burning with my tears. Even your tears, which are produced, if you're not hydrated enough, it, it, it burns your eye. And to overcome that, hydrate while you're cycling. Mm, okay. but Sweat itself cannot damage your eyes. So what about for people like me who wears uh, contact lenses? Does it increase any chance of infections to my eyes? Of course, I su suggest daily disposables if you're, you're going for a long ride. At the end of the ride, take it out and throw it away. The reason I say daily disposable is because you are on a long ride. You don't know what you're picking up in your eye. You don't yes. want to use that lens the next day. If I want to get LASIK surgery done or ICL, what would be your advice for me pre or post surgery? For example, like how long should I be avoiding sunlight exposure? This is not in my field, mm -hmm. but of course I have friends that do it. You're pretty much okay within three days after you do the procedure. But uh, like I said, you need to talk to a refractive surgeon when it comes to that. In my personal opinion, I think anyone whose uh, refractive index is above 500 should I consider it. The LASIK surgery has improved over the years and their techniques have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. The amount of dry, dry eyes and reduced sensitivity to the eyes has reduced remarkably. Mm -hmm. so above 500, I'd say go ahead. And of course, now you have ICL where they place the lens mm -hmm. just above your original lens and below the iris. And that's a simple procedure and you don't damage your cornea as well. So that's another procedure that you can think about. Thank you for sharing with us, uh, Dr. Sanjeev. No problem. And thank you for watching. If you want to know more information, just comment below and let us know. Thank you. Subscribe to Tara's channel. <laughs> it's really good.